after coming under intense ostracization from critics on all sides of the political spectrum over his attacks yesterday on the late Senator John McCain, our Arizona, including a harshly vicious put down by his daughter, The View host Meghan McCain, President Trump doubled down on his assault on his deceased Republican rival, oblivious to the unseemliness of his vitriol against the late principled politician. The closing dual pincers of both the Mueller investigation, looking into his campaign's collusion with Russia to win the presidency, and the spin-off investigation by the federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York, probing his financial crimes, campaign contribution violations and the shady overall business practices of the Trump Organization, have the president raging over the document that launched a thousand inquiries, the Steele dossier. The product of campaign opposition research initially started by his Republican opponents during the GOP primaries and later picked up by the Hillary Clinton campaign. After coming under intense ostracization from critics on all sides of the political spectrum over his attacks yesterday on the late Senator John McCain, our Arizona, including a harshly vicious put down by his daughter, The View host Meghan McCain, President Trump doubled down on his assault on his deceased Republican rival, oblivious to the unseemliness of his vitriol against the late principled politician. The closing dual pincers of both the Mueller investigation, looking into his campaign's collusion with Russia to win the presidency, and the spin-off investigation by the federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York, probing his financial crimes, campaign contribution violations and the shady overall business practices of the Trump Organization, have the president raging over the document that launched a thousand inquiries, the Steele dossier. The product of campaign opposition research initially started by his Republican opponents during the GOP primaries and later picked up by the Hillary Clinton campaign. Trump, of course, lies about the origins of the dossier and the fact that not only have the majority of the allegations contained within the document been confirmed but that those that have not still haven't been disproven. He also manages to fit in a dig at his favorite cable news channel target, CNN with vague insinuations that the network's viewers would not be qualified to provide any sort of information that might prove valuable to investigators. Starting with the premise that a legitimate and deeply worrying area of inquiry into foreign meddling in the U.S. elections is a witch hunt rather than a matter of intense national security concern proves that Trump places his own self-interest over that of the country as a whole. It is Trump's obsession with the Steele dossier and its accusations of the type of kinky sexual practices that his evangelical followers would surely find a way to excuse were the alleged video of the incident ever to surface that led him to his second attack on the late Senator McCain in two days. Trump would have been wiser to have avoided mentioning McCain's academic status at the Annapolis Naval Academy since it merely reminds the public of his own status as a confirmed draft dodger during the time that the late senator was a prisoner of war during the Vietnam conflict and of his recently revealed attempts to ensure that his own academic records never see the light of day. The president's description of McCain's forwarding of information that indicated that our most aggressive foreign adversary was attempting to attack the integrity of the American electoral process, an attempt that Trump's own unlikely election decided by a minimal number of votes in a few swing states proved to be successful, shows that McCain was indeed a true patriot who was willing unlike Trump to put the good of the country over his own party's interests. Trump's tweet indicates that the president doth protest too much as he is under siege from a rapidly unfolding series of investigations that will likely lead to his eventual imprisonment absent a pardon from his successor, he lashes out in desperation at the Democrats, whatever media that are not already wholly in his pocket, and at a dead politician who can't fight the reputational damage that Trump is trying to inflict upon him from beyond the grave. Indeed, it is Trump's incendiary rhetoric that is the garbage here and it should be refused and incinerated in a manner that causes the least pollution of the media landscape as possible.